The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 21st, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, will go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it quick. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, that would be great. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started. A terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got a sea of red out here. You've got the Dow off 63, two tenths of a percent. The S&P down 24, six tenths of a percent. The NASDAQ 100, eight tenths of a percent, or 175. The Russell 1 and four tenths. The uh, semis off one and a half percent, 48 points. The trannies are down three tenths, or 48 points out there. Spot follow tunics up eight and a half percent, buck 71. Still below its 50 day exponential moving average. Gold's off 10 bucks. Silver's down 72 cents. Light sweet crude is up a buck. Natural gas up 11 cents. And the 30 year treasury trade down at 139.21. Lead the charge dollar wise, the upside you got Tesla up 54 bucks. Belmont Industries up 18 or 7 percent. Watsco up 10 or 11 bucks. That's up nearly 4 percent. Allegiant Travel is up nine dollars, nearly 6 percent. Newcore is up nine bucks, five and a half percent. To the downside, it is the amazing one. Amazon, which is off 81 bucks, two and a half percent. Chipotle off 74 percent. Mercado Libre off 44 or 4 percent. Shopify down 39, seven and a half percent. Google's off 35. That's about one and a half percent as well. So what is going on out here? Well, let's do this. Let's go switch from this set of charts to our daily time frame equity future charts go take a look at what signal information they are providing for us we begin by taking a look at the es mini uh, price got up towards the center of its daily profile. That's at the 45.12 level. Um, rejected that. It's now trading below a green oscillator and change line and also trading below the bottom of its daily profile, 44.52. That suggests running for the 43.75.50 level. That is a TD9 count breakout. Uh, not, that's the TD9 count bottom threshold level. If price were to close below that, then the signal there would be that the ES Mini would be targeting 42.39. So 43.75.50 is going to be the key area. I don't have a guarantee the price is going to get down there. I'm, you know, we'd have to look at the intraday charts, which I'm sure we will do during the show out there. But right now, that's the message. 44.52 is a key level to be watching in 43.75.50. If you take a look at the NQ in the upper right-hand side, 13.876.50 is its very key number. If there's a close below that, it'll negate the TD9 count bottom and suggest a move to 13.417. If we, and, and in the case of the NQ, that's the one that's been the real stick in the mud out here. You can see how we've had three tests of that red oscillator and change line. Again, you have a falling price oscillator below zero. Now failing at the support level of the bottom of its uh, bullish structure daily profile, that would not be a, a positive outcome. But the less positive outcome would be a close below 13.876.50. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, price got up to its TD9 count breakdown level at the 35.215 area. It has given that up, and price may be targeting. Now, in the case of the uh, Dow Equity Future contract, the signal here, quite frankly, is kind of neutral to bullish. Uh, so we'll just simply go with neutral out here. 
and uh, price might be straight above the top of its daily profile. I take that back. It is not trading above the top of its daily profile. So right now it's just consolidating with inside its daily profile out there, which is between 34,321 to 35,281. But it's a neutral signal. And the reason is because price is still above its green oscillator and change line, which is at about the 34,641-ish area. The Russell 2000 trading below its red oscillator and change line that could suggest a move to the 1980 70 level. If price were to close below 1980 70, then we're looking at a run all the way back down to the bottom of its consolidation. That's that rectangle that you see. It's been consolidating for really quite some time ever since uh, the uh, January time period out here. So that's what's going on from a daily standpoint. Let's take a quick peek. Now, let's do this here. Let's stay on this set of charts. Let's do this. Let's get a little bit more granular with regard to the equity future contracts out here. We'll go to... We'll go to one that uses just the daily is the longest time frame in the upper left. Now I've got all these intraday signals out here. So what we're looking for is any kind of a bottom signal. Five-minute chart, nothing there just yet. It's triggered a road's momentum indicator signal, but needs a bullish reversal candle and a close above that red oscillator and change line. So there's going to be a real – look at how that red oscillator and change line has acted as resistance all day long. So now that's a cool thing. And it sits on such a short time frame, this will help each of you. Right now, that oscillator and change line is 44.33. I don't know where it will be 10 minutes from now. Um, and uh, you can learn how to use, use this tool. Just subscribe to Mastering Probability. It will teach you all about that. Um, but to watch right now, 44, let's call it 4434. If there's a close above that on a five minute basis, you'll have your first signal of a bounce, that bounce that could take us into the 4451 level. You've got a TD9 count pattern that is forming or has formed. It will complete in this next five minute session, a uh, 10 minute session. So that would be at 120. And uh, again, the oscillator and change line becomes its target. That's the 4445 level. You've got a potential TD9 count bottom. That's assuming that on the 15 minute basis, price is able to close back above 44.35 at 44.32. So we'll watch that out there. No signal on the 30-minute time frame for a bottom, nor on the 60-minute, nor on the 120, nor on the five-hour time frame chart. And the five-hour time frame chart this morning generated roads momentum indicator top. This suggests that price may want to target 44.19. So watch the five-minute chart, then the 10-minute chart, then the 30-minute chart out there. Now, the five-minute chart, again, it close above that red oscillator and change line would suggest a bounce the same with the 10 minute out there and then you know we'll just kind of follow along so that's what's going on inside the es mini out here um i believe that we've got a caller so let me see here we've got gino uh, i'm sorry we've got garo garo thanks for calling garo newport beach california garo how are you very good and how about you sir Excellent. Thanks so much for uh, asking. Uh, tell the folks what uh, what you want to uh, take a look at. I'm going to try to uh, punch up uh, my set of charts of, of your tools that I have for you. But I think it's the LABU that you're that you're calling about. So uh, let the folks know how I can best help you. Yes, sir. Um, LABU is the opposite of LABD. And uh, instead of shortening each of them, I go long on LABD. Uh, and um, LABU today, it hit the low of the lows, which was on March the 14th, was 1153. And it went lower than that. It went to uh, 1124. <laughs> I see that. Hey, Garo, my apology, Garo. We're about to go to a break here. If you'd be kind enough, yes, just yes. hold on. We'll come back to you in about four minutes. This is Steve Rose yes, with Garo in Newport Beach, California. We're taking a look at the uh, uh, LABU, the Biotech Bull 3X position. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. With Garo, Newport Beach, California, we're taking a look at LABU, which is the uh, three-time uh, biotech uh, bull for the S&P 500. Uh, right, right now, trading out 1132. So my apology about that. We had to go to that quick break out there, Garo. But uh, uh, go ahead. So it is trading below yesterday's low for sure. In fact, it's trading below a number of lows out here. How can I help you? Yes, sir. It not only is from lower than yesterday's low, it's all-time low. You see, I couldn't find any lower than 11.53, but yes, today's right. low was 11.24. But if, when I compare that with XBI, uh, the XBI, the main support that I can see from here, which is 81.77, is around $75, $76. But I don't have any lower than, uh, lower for that LBI, uh, LABU. I don't know how far that can go. Uh, I don't have any tools to know that exactly what's going to be lower than 1124. Is there sure. any way that uh, you, you have such a number that how far LBU can go is going to be as to a single digit or it's going to it's going to be different? Yeah, great, great question. And the answer is the, the only tool that I have, and you really had already hinted to it, and it's a tool in essence that you're using is look at, in essence, what the underlying instruments or instrument in this case is, which is the XBI that you had mentioned uh, as well. So what we can do is, and that's just a one X, so we're not dealing with the three X's out there. So we can look at the um, XBI and I can share with you what it's, so it's low out here. Looks like it might be around the price point of, this is XBI, this would take you back into May of 2006, and that could get down to 1392. It's traded 81 bucks right now. So as far as how what what happens with regard to LABU, you know, I I don't know. Uh, maybe they might maybe they do a reverse split or something like that. That's typically what they do when things start to get a little bit out of uh, control out here. Uh, but the question should be, what's the XBI signaling to us? You know, where is where is a potential level of support here? And right now. 
XBI is trading into its most recent swing point, which was March 14th. That's a critical level. And the uh, swing point low there was 80.34. The high is 85.29. So we're trading inside it right now. 17 million shares are what changed hands on the 14th. Today, you're with 8 million shares. So, Garo, this is actually pulling back with lighter volume. Now, because it's trading with inside that swing point, if price got down and tested 80.34, that means at least 80.33 or below, closes back above it on the same day and does with less than 17 million shares, that could be the signal of a, a potential bottom out there because it would be a test and rejection of a swing point. It would be on lighter volume, indicating that there's not as many sellers as there were back on the 14th. It would be a signal of a potential um, of a potential bottom. If I look at the weekly chart, we can draw a simple trend line off of the lows from back in 2020, the March lows of 2020, and then use for our next touch point the uh, lows out here from the uh, week of uh, March the 14th. So another great, we can see right now, prices hit that level, that rising trend line. That is the center panel screen that we have out here. And uh, it's also testing the bottom of its weekly profile. So you've got two real nice areas on a weekly basis of support that are being tested, Garo. And I would say if there's a close at the end of the week below 82.22, uh, that would be suggesting uh, at least a test of that March 14th swing point low. And again, that area is at 80.34. If you take out the 80.34 level, then um, I would say the next price target is probably down around the 62.94, and that's the March of 2020 uh, lows oh, that would be out there. Does that make sense? Well, $62. So I mean, you can go as, as far as 62 bucks. Well, yeah, I mean, on a monthly basis. So on a monthly basis, that week yeah, of yeah, or the month yeah. of March was 237 million shares. So today's the 21st, we're at 177. Mm -hmm. This does about 8 million shares a day. It doesn't seem like, mm -hmm. just quick math in my head, that it's gonna have the volume to to bust that out, at least at this stage, but it's trading inside there and says, yeah, I could go test that area. But first things first, Carl. The first thing is the low of March 14th. If that gets taken out, that's when the $62 area comes into play. But right now, price is testing at a, a very key level. It's got it confirmed weekly by the D-point pattern. And uh, price is testing a key level of two key levels of support, the bottom of that weekly profile and that rising trend line. So it's possible that uh, L uh, that XBI is going to find support here. Possible. Okay. If, if that's so, if that LABD, L yes. how far that can go higher? Can go can go hit the $50 or $51 or maybe this is the tops? Yeah, so the, the the way that I would trade that, and it's the way that I trade. So if I'm trading, let's say, Nugget, um, what I will do is I will just focus in on the GDX charts for my signals um, as opposed to NUGT, which is a 3X. It's the same thing that you're doing here. I would be focused on XBI versus LABD. As far as where could LABD go to, boy, I, I don't know. You know, this thing has had so many splits out here. Gar, if we pull LABD back, this actually says, because of all the splits, that at some point in time, this would have traded at around 15,940. No, 21. Oh, wait a minute here. 21,000. 20,724. Now, both you and I know that this never traded to that. So it's one of the reasons why I really don't pay as much attention to the signals on the 2X or the 3X and go back to the 1X for that signal information. So, I mean, this would be, I, if I were to answer your question the way that you presented it, I would say, no, girl, this could get all the way back to 21,000. But but because no, we know like how these <laughs> we know how these three X's work, we know that's not a likely outcome. So I would just yeah. simply stick with the uh, still trade the LABU and the LABD. But I would really be making those calls off of what's going on inside either XBI or the IBB. I think the IBB is the Nasdaq biotech and XBI is the S and P biotech. Yes, so sir. it might yes, be, might yes, might be at support, but uh, you know it'll have to prove itself to us uh, on some short term time frame charts, and it hasn't done that yet because we're we're really near the, the low of the day, basically. Very good, very good. Is there very anything good. else that thank I can you, do sir. for you? Thank, thank, yes, yes, yes. I appreciate Perfect. it. Thank you, sir. You, you bet. Always good to hear from you. That was Garo in Newport Beach, California. And folks, would love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648 is, uh, is the number out here. Now, um, I'm going to do this since, uh, since we're already talking about biotech area. And I'm going to switch over to a different screen. I was trying to pull up because I've got some of the details of the IBB out here. 
Dan in the Tiger's Den was good enough. He was seeing my screen saying, hey, Steve-O, you really need to go to XBI, not the IBB. But uh, since I have some of these biotech stocks up here and, and, and we can take a look at the IBB, which is what I'm going to do right now, here are what you're looking at are the top eight stocks. That was as of last night's closeout here. So we take a look at the top eight stocks. Amgen, I don't see a topping signal. Looks like this wants to continue to move higher out here. Uh, Gilead, this is a trade above the top of its uh, weekly pro or daily profile. Looks like it wants to target 66, 30. Um, in the case of Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, it's in a bearish structure daily profile. That may be, may be targeting 691, the bottom of the daily profile. Vertex Pharmaceuticals just consolidating with inside its profile between 277 and 290. Moderna looks like it wants to target 132. Uh, IQV. I don't know what that is. Doesn't matter. It's still kind of neutral, right? It's got a TD9 count top, but price has been holding that green oscillator and change line. So we'll go with uh, um, a neutral signal there. Illumina, not much here to help us with, but those are the top eight instruments inside of the IBB. Another way to uh, trade this. So we really want to do the same thing for XBI. Go get the top eight or 10 weighted instruments, see what they're doing. They will always help us in identifying what the market's intention is or what the ETF's intention is that has all of them. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. And if you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so, uh, Jay just posted in the uh, Tiger's Den here for us. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell interview at the IMF economic uh, debate. It is appropriate in his view to move more quickly on interest rates. 50 basis point hike on the table for the next meeting, uh, all to uh, supposedly combat inflation. Now, that's the most disingenuous, not now what Jay put in there is, 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 is it's the most disingenuous statement that a person could make. Not Jay, but federal chair Jerome Powell. Tell me, how is raising interest rates going to reduce inflation? Inflation, the inflation that we're dealing with right now, it's supply chain out here. You can, all that raising interest rates is going to do is make it even worse. I wish these people would be honest, really. I mean, it is just, uh, you just want to blow your brains out. Well, I don't want to blow my brains out. Instead, what I want to do is go on to the uh, next, uh, oh, oh, well, actually, what we've got up on the screen here right now, this was a request from Peter in Park City, and uh, Peter was asking about the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator, which right now, that's the center panel out here, and you can see it's printed at a minus 12 and change out there. Now, yesterday, it closed above zero. That was day number one above zero. You know, we've got that two-day rule above support or below support and above resistance in order to confirm well the new york stock exchange in essence has the same tool out here and that is you need two days above or below that zero threshold level to confirm which side of the uh, trade either who has who has control of the markets the general markets so to speak out here this new york stock exchange we're looking at so because it was only one day above it and if today closes back below zero, I don't know whether it will or won't, Peter. If it closes below zero, then it says sellers were always in control. If it closes back above zero, then we'd have day number two, and that would say that buyers are the ones that are in control. So it's going to be an end of day reading, not a reading as we speak right now. So that's something that you know you want to take a look at. Perhaps we can take a look at that tomorrow as well. Uh, so we've taken care of that. I think I've gotten to everything in the Tiger's Den, but there's so much stuff that has been posted in here. If if I if you were looking for something specific, if you could, you know, either type that in, uh, that would be helpful, or you can type it into me individually, and I'll be happy to get to that. And uh, so uh, let's go to uh, let's go to our first question. This one is coming in from uh, Nick. Nick A. And Nick says, "Hey Steve, if you have time, would you cover MJ and some of its components like Cron, ACB, Tilray? Thank you for all the great work you do." Uh, you're welcome. So let's go take a look at. So what we can do here, Nicholas, is um, let's do this. If you give me a moment, I've got. I, I went ahead and opened this up. Let me make sure it's all set here. Yeah. Okay. Great. So we can we can go take a look at the components that make up the MJ. Now, I've, this may not have been updated during the last uh, five six days out here. When I say this, let me change the screen so you can see what it is that we're looking at. Which are the components. So this is basically the top eight components, maybe not in this order, uh, for the M for the um, uh, alternative harvest ETF, which is what Nicholas is asking about, MJ. So here we can see in the case of Tilray, Tilray negated a TD9 count bottom is clearly going to target its breakout level of 518. We're trading at 534. Only bar number six today. Uh, 518 may be a buy area. Don't know. We can say that CGC canopy growth blew through its TD9 count uh, pattern, uh, blew through its breakout level of 625, and is right now testing its swing points from back in. Let's see when this was. This is probably March 24th, March 14th. Uh, March 15th. Uh, yeah, March 15th. So I, I don't have the volumes on here to take a look at, but that's one of the things that I would look at there, Nicholas. You've got SNDL. Looks like that's going to go target the 47 cent area. GRWG. I don't see a bottom here. In fact, it's taking out lows with no bottom signal. Don't know what the volume is at. Yes, about CRON. CRON has pulled back to its breakout level of 312. No bottom signal. That could be a bottom. But based on the fact that uh, canopy growth has blown through its breakout level, well, only one of those eight have done that. Well, ACB, Aurora Cannabis, is testing that area right now. So 318. So maybe, Nicholas, maybe watch ACB, see what that does. But if it if it closes below um, uh, the 318 level, you're 317 right now, that suggests going and testing its swing point low. Uh, so basically, if you're looking for an entry into MJ, if we take a look at these top eight instruments out here, they're not really giving us that signal as we speak at the moment. Now, if we take a look at MJ itself, let me pull this chart over here. It is also right at its TD9 count breakout area. So will 872 hold? I don't know. But if it does, then what we should see is a bounce up to the 924, 928 level. We'll call it 928. And if uh, 872 fails, then we're back to the 
uh, lows out here. It looks like I'm sure that, that is probably March the 15th as well, or is it the 14th? March 14th. So let me do this here. Let's uh, get off of these charts. So we, we went ahead and gave uh, Nicholas the uh, view of uh, of the of some of the holdings with inside there. Again, nothing that uh, blows our mind to say that MJ is bottoming, other than maybe a couple of tests of the breakout level of support. Let's go back to my black background screens and let's go take a look at some of the a couple of volume. Uh, aspects and the first one that we'll look at when we get out here is which one so first let's get to our three panel chart three time frame there we go and which one is i say was uh Canopy growth was the first one. CGC is testing that swing point area. It's just really just the daily time frame that we're looking at here. And just looking for a volume aspect here for Nicholas. So the volume aspect looks like the low was actually on the 15th. That low was 562. Yep, that is the swing point. Volume there about 4.5 million. You're into it with 3.6 million shares. So it's pulling into a swing point, hasn't tested it, but with enough volume to say that not a bottom, it's going to lease or it should go test that area. That's what canopy growth is suggesting. Aurora cannabis ACB is also pulling back looks like into that swing point area this one looks like it's the 14th uh, it is the 14th that's a swing and has six million shares you're at 5.1 today now what it's doing though the high of that swing point is three dollars and 18 you're at 316 so close below 318 Nicholas is going to suggest that this is going to go test the lows and that would be at the 289 level um, let me see CRON let me see if that was testing if that was tested, that's tested the swing point as well, and it is. So the swing point low here, 96, it's either the 15th or the 14th. They both have the same blow. So you got volume of 1.62 million shares, let's say. That was on the 14th, and you're at 809. So if you're going to – so here's here's one where you could get – this could give you a buy signal. But – just if this gives you the buy signal, but the others don't, and Ace and 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 uh, MJ closes below that breakout level, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest taking. But this is this is the better looking of everything that we've looked at so far. Now, what I mean by that is that if price can close today above 311 or 315, it looks like what you will have is a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. But again, you know, one stock that gives you that test where the others don't, or the ETF itself is saying, uh, you know. Maybe I want to head lower. But, I, you know, continue to watch uh, CRO, and that is uh, Kronos Group out there. So, Nicholas, I hope that helps you out. hope that gave you the information that you were looking for, and thanks so much for the request. The next question coming in from Michael P. Michael wants to take a look at it. He says, I asked about ARKK about a week ago. It went right to where you said, 60 bucks. Well, let's go ahead. That's a beautiful thing, ARKK. Let's pull this up on the screen. And uh, now it's at 53.88. Okay. So, 5380. Well, let's finish reading the question here. Michael says, I see it going to 38 next few months, looking at a three-year chart. So let's go take a look at what we get back to this break. ARKK, try to get a feel for where this is headed. Zero, ETF, and We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back. So, Michael, we're, we've got the daily chart up here for you uh, for ARKK, and it is right now testing its uh, swing point from March the uh, 15th out there. Now, that swing point had volume of about 29 million shares. You're pulling back right now with 17 million. So you're pulling back into it with lighter volume. What you want to look for today is, well, first of all, you're suggesting this might pull back to the $53 area. We already, I'm sorry, yeah, at the $38 area. In order for that to happen, you've got to take out the uh, March uh, 15th low. And right now, price is pulling back into a light volume. And in fact, if you get a close about 54.72 today, you will have a test and rejection on lighter volume. Now, I'm assuming it's lighter volume. You'd have to come back at 4 o'clock to confirm that. But right now, it's 143. That's what it looks like to me with regard to that. Now, let's do this. Let's pull over my white background chart. As, as one place to start. And here we take a look at the daily time frame. We can see that price is trading below a breakout level as well as a TD9 count bottom. But it's trading into that swing point with lighter volume. So uh, the, the daily chart says watch the swing point. If it closes inside there, even if it's on light volume, likely that low gets tested. Weekly time frame chart tells us what price is trading back as a support level don't know what it's going to be tomorrow but price is trading to support that's the bottom of its weekly profile monthly time frame chart is where if the daily march 15th candle session fails price closes below it with or without volume then michael that takes us to your 38 dollar area which is really 39.41 to be exact and that is a monthly td9 count breakout level this formed a TD9 count top. Uh, you're in bar number eight. It needs to get below the low of last month, either this month or next month or the month after in order to generate a monthly TD9 count bottom. But there's where your 39.40 comes to. Uh, and then real quickly on a 30 minute time frame chart, you've got now a TD9 count bottom that is formed. Price is testing an oscillator and change line. If price uh, were to close above that, you get a move up to 55.73, maybe even 58.73. Whereas if it rejects this and it takes out the low of the day, well then that's going to be a signal to you, Michael, that uh, price is going to go test the low of that March 15th level, but it's doing it on lighter volume out there. So you still got to get a close below that March 15th in order for you to get that uh, signal that you're looking at. Now, real quickly here, and I, and I do mean quickly, I can just simply uh, post or show you the top eight instruments or at least were the top eight instruments a week ago. The first one here being Tesla. Tesla right now running and resistance the top of its profile. Teladoc uh, looks bearish or looks like it wants to head lower. It's trading below the bottom of its profile. Red oscillator and change line. Roku testing the breakout level of its uh, TD9 count trading below that. So that looks like it wants lower. You need a bullish reversal candle in coin out there to uh, generate a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. So yeah, right now we're not exactly seeing any... Uh, 
enthusiasm for a bottom. It looks like that 30-minute chart is just uh, suggesting a counter trend move. So hope that helps you out. Michael, thanks so much for taking the time to write in and have a, a great day. Uh, you also wanted to take a look at ticker symbol DRIV. So I'm just going to do that on the uh, black background charts here for you real quick. And, uh, and then get on to, oops, I've got to actually type in the right symbol, DRIV. Let me get that going out here. Yes, let me get to the right screen. I'm not on the right screen. Let's get to that. And here we go. So you just wanted me to look at it. Let me see here. I think a DRV uh, EV fund, you went short today. Okay, great. So you went short today, and uh, right now what it's also doing is testing support. And that's the bottom of its profile. So you'd love to see it close below 2539. Now, last time price was down here, Michael, was April 12th. It did 216,000 shares. You're at 157 right now. So it's similar volume. It's not like it's blowing it away. Of course, you'd like blow away the low, which is 2507. That would then give you an A to B equals CD to the downside. You've got a support level, which is at the bottom of its weekly profile, and not too far away from its rising trend line. That's in the 2495 level. And the monthly is trading below the um, the bottom of its profile. Let me, uh, give me a moment here and get to the, my my other radio show charts. I, I, I can't leave it like this, uh, but I do have one chart that I can put up just for the daily time frame, I think. Yeah. And uh, DRIV and see if there's any other signals coming from it that, that you need to be aware of. But right now, the signal that you need to be aware of because you went short is 2539. If that level holds, because you're pulling back on light volume, you might just take today's profits, uh, really. Um, and if you get a close below it, uh, okay, you go ahead and stay with the trade. But here's the daily time frame chart. Uh, 2514 is a TD9 count breakout level. Now, I know that this hasn't updated for today's pricing. And for some reason, I've got too many things running. I was getting too... So 25. So the key level here that you need to see this close below, another key level is 2514. If you get that, then you get it back to the uh, March uh, 15th uh, trading session out there. There we go. So it's going to be that 2514 level that you want to see this thing crack. So I hope that helps you out. Michael, thanks again for writing in. Let's go to our next question. Our next question coming in from David H. This is David in Tomball, Texas. He wants to take a look at Newmont Mining. Uh, Newmont Mining is not looking good. I looked at that this morning. NEM is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's get that uh, fired up here on our black background screens for the moment, and we'll get it also going on the white background chain screens. It, is it, uh, can you give me an entry point on Newmont? Is it pulling back today? It is pulling back to yeah. Where is the OUL, the daily, and the weekly charts? Well, what this is doing, as we take a look at it right now, is it's trading below a brand new profile that formed a couple of days ago. So that's a problem with regard to Newmont Mining. Why is it a problem? Well, if we take a look at this uptrend that we've been in, in the case of Newmont Mining, you know, which is the number one weighted uh, instrument inside of the uh, GDX, notice this. Let's say the bottom formed out here on uh, December the 2nd. Look at how each of the pullbacks found support at their daily profiles. Each of them. We have not seen a bottom of a daily profile give way until today. So, David, that says, hey, time for us to step back, take a look at this, because what is the number one instrument signaling to us? Now, it's possible that it's just a simple flush, and that simple flush is going to end today. And the proof of that will really be tomorrow. What do you mean, Steve? Well, you're confusing me. You're talking about today and now tomorrow. Well, what I'm really referring to is the fact that price is pulled back to the top of its weekly profile. I am not suggesting entering. I'm suggesting observing at this stage here. If price closes below 76.39, it's trading at 76.33, not today, but tomorrow's close, that's going to suggest a further pullback inside of Newmont Mining. So you're looking for a buy area. And this is another, another way that these profiles really help us, right? Because take a look at the trend out here. This is not Stevie interpretation. It's not my interpretation. I'm just narrating what the charts are. I mean, you get to look at the same thing. You tell me how important were the bottoms of these profiles on Newmont Mining on the way up. Extraordinarily important. And now, today's busting through it with volume. You're 9 million shares today. That's got to say or give you reason to pause. So now we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here. Where is this possibly headed to? Well, the daily chart says it could get back to 59.86. That's not what I'm saying it's going to do because we've got other levels of support that we looked at in the weekly chart. Well, turns out in the weekly chart, David, you also are pulling back to your green oscillator and change line. And as long as this area holds out here, well, then it's going to give you for the weekly time frame a neutral signal. From a monthly standpoint, what do we have out here? 
month isn't over, but you could generate a rose momentum indicator top on a weekly, on a yearly basis. And this is this is this again. We're getting different signals out here, but I got to share them all with you. And right now, as we speak, Newmont Mining is in full out blown bullish mode. That's right. Why does TV say that? We're trading right now still above yesterday's high. And that's the instrument. That's the that's a absolute indication of a bullish instrument up there. As long as it remains above 7531, that's the call of the yearly chart. So at this stage here, Dave, let's look at this tomorrow, not today. See you in the We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. David in Tomball, Texas, you've got a couple of genders that have got your back. They're telling us that uh, tomorrow morning at about 7.05 is when uh, the numbers should be released for Newmont Mining. So maybe you'll have some more information there. And, and uh, right back tomorrow, and we'll uh, take a look at it during the uh, 1 o'clock show. Let's go to our next question out here. This one is from Mimi. Well, Mimi wants to take a look at Verizon, which is trading back towards prior swing points, doing a little bit lighter volume, 27 million shares uh, when it was last back at these highs, 36 million shares. And right now you're at 19 million. The question is uh, Verizon report tomorrow comment on the charts please so let me pull over the other daily so we know you're headed up to a swing point you're testing it on lighter volume is it going to be able to bust through that level I don't know 5534 is also it's TD9 count breakdown level you're at 5534 are you long the position um 
you know, I mean, it looks good, but price is up at resistance. So um, you know, that may be all she wrote on the weekly chart out here, also at resistance at 55.50. So um, what is this going to do tomorrow? Numbers and so forth, I, I don't know. Uh, it is, uh, but you're up at a resistance area. And uh, that's about all that I can share with you, Mimi. I wish I could share more, but that's uh, that's it. And I don't know what else you were looking for on this. So let's go to the next question out here. It'll be the last question of the uh, day because we're out of time, unfortunately. And that is from Hector. Let's take a look at the CVX. So let me pull over the CVX charts out here and just uh, narrate uh, to you what they are telling us so I don't uh, spend uh, uh, just valuable seconds that we have just such a few. of. So when we take a look at CVX, you've got a TD9 count. And now roads mint to indicator top. And price right now is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. And that's between the range of about 163.21 and 167.59. The breakout area out here is 163.42. So we're going to call this 163.21 a key level. Price is likely targeting that area. You don't, you, you've got a topping pattern, but until you break through the bottom of this profile out here, you really don't have a confirmed sell signal or anything. Uh, Exxon, uh, this is a uh, Chevron, much like we took a look at um, for one of those other instruments, uh, I forget which one it was, uh, Newmont Mining. Look at how the bottom of these profiles have held as support out. So uh, likely headed that CVX is 163.42. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White, is up next. Tom O'Brien will bring us on home, and I'll be back with you on a fantastic Friday, 1 o'clock sharp. Have a terrific Thursday, folks. Thanks for joining us.